Hello everyone, I'm Nita Hone. Today I'm bringing you the second episode of Planeswalker Profiles here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. In this series, I look at the various incarnations of particular Planeswalkers and talk about the impact they've had on the history of the game. This week we're looking at the Planeswalker who gave his life in War of the Spark to save Liliana from Nico Bolas, and that is Gideon Jura. Gideon has been around for a while, since 2010, and has been featured on eight Planeswalker cards, counting his appearances in Planeswalker decks. I do want to note that I don't talk about the Planeswalker deck versions of Planeswalkers in these videos because they are intentionally printed to be underpowered, meaning there isn't a whole lot of discussion about them other than to say that they aren't all that great. Anyhow, in this video, we'll proceed chronologically, looking at each version of Gideon and talking about what impact they've had on the game. The first time we saw Gideon was back in Rise of the Eldrazi, and he was pretty impressive in that first appearance. He came with some unique abilities. His plus two could make creatures attack him, something that could be quite effective if you were making your opponent's smaller creatures attack into your larger creatures. He also came with the ability to kill tap creatures, which combos particularly well with that plus two. In fact, if you use the two abilities back to back, you end up not really losing any loyalty at all, and you get to kill a creature. Perhaps the most unique thing he could do is turn himself into a creature who can't be damaged, something that we will see has shown up on every version of Gideon ever printed. Unlike most Planeswalkers, Gideon likes to jump into the fray himself, and who can blame him since he's invulnerable? This Gideon set a precedent that most of the other versions of Gideon would follow, and that is that he saw play in Magic's highest levels, that of Grand Prix and Pro Tours. This Gideon was played a ton in Standard, where he was featured most frequently in one of the most powerful decks we've ever seen in Standard, Cobblade, a deck that had to be banned out of Standard. He has also had a lot of success in Modern, where he's frequently featured in blue-white control decks as a win condition. The next time Gideon showed up was on his first trip to Ravnica in Gate Crash. This Gideon is one of the more unique planeswalkers in the entire game, and this is because he can raise his loyalty at a pretty absurd rate, depending on what your opponent's board state looks like. His plus one lets him add a number of loyalty counters equal to the number of creatures your opponent controls, and when this Gideon turns himself into a creature, he has power and toughness equal to the loyalty counters on him, which can make him quite large. The other thing that this Gideon introduces is the fact that Gideon not only prevents all damage dealt to him, but he is also indestructible, making that ability to become a creature even more frightening than it was on Gideon Jura. This indestructibility would appear on all future versions of Gideon. Then he has an ultimate that wipes the board of everything, except for him, at which point he can start attacking the opponent while he is in the creature mode. Apart from Gideon's from Planeswalker decks, Gideon Champion of Justice is the only Gideon Planeswalker who did not see any top-tier competitive play. The reason for this is that Gideon does some sort of counterintuitive things. Normally, when you play a Planeswalker, you don't want your opponent to have creatures, but this Gideon kind of does. And sure, while you can rapidly raise his loyalty thanks to those creatures, it also might mean your opponent has plenty of creatures to attack Gideon with anyway. As a result of this, Gideon has pretty much only seen play in EDH decks that can make his loyalty increase rapidly, with his most popular home being Atraxa, Praetor's Voice decks. Next up, we have the double-faced version of Gideon. The cycle of double-faced Planeswalkers in Magic Origins is intended to illustrate what the Planeswalker was like before their Spark Awakening, and that moment when they become a Planeswalker is represented by the transformation of a creature into a Planeswalker. From this card, we learn that Gideon's name was originally Kithion, and we also learn that even before he was a Planeswalker, he had a knack for indestructibility. Kithion hails from the plain of Theros, and more specifically, Akros, a city-state inspired by the real-life Spartans of ancient Greek history. So, the Kithian side of the card gives you a nice aggressive creature as a one-mana 2-1 who can make himself indestructible in a pinch, and he can transform into Gideon Battleforged if you send two other creatures into battle with him. The indestructibility is nicely synergistic here, because you can even attack with Kithian into a board where your opponent can block, provided you make him indestructible, he will stick around and transform. Gideon Battleforged's first ability harkens back to his first appearance, as it makes a creature attack Gideon, which you can use to your benefit. His plus one is nice because it provides him with some protection, because you can untap a creature that you might have attacked with already, who can then be an effective blocker thanks to indestructibility. You can, of course, also use the plus one to make a creature indestructible and into a scarier attacker. Gideon's final ability is, of course, the ability that allows him to become a 4-4 indestructible creature. 
This Gideon was particularly well suited for aggro decks, which were already interested in playing 1 mana 2 ones anyway, and were especially happy to play a 1 mana 2 one that can turn into a planeswalker in the middle part of the game. While in standard, Gideon saw all of his play in that format's version of White Weenie, a fairly traditional mono-white aggro deck. Gideon next appeared in battle for Zendikar in what so far has been his most powerful incarnation as Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Unlike his predecessors, this Gideon can make creature tokens, an ability that is always nice on a planeswalker because they can provide protection. By making a 2-2 every turn, you're also gaining card advantage, since your one card, Gideon, is producing multiple bodies that can trade for an entire card of your opponent's. One of the other nice things about this Gideon is that he has an ultimate that you can use right away, unlike most Planeswalkers. And while the ultimate isn't hugely powerful or anything, it does give you an anthem effect, pumping your entire team, and sometimes that's what you need to win the game. Another thing that made Gideon, ally of Zendikar, different than the other Gideons is that he can raise his loyalty while he transforms himself into an indestructible creature, which in this case is a 5-5. And yes, if you used his minus 4 ability, it synergizes with his other two. Your knights become 3-3s, and Gideon will be a 6-6 when he jumps into the fray. So, yeah, this Gideon was incredibly powerful and was a fixture in standard for his entire time there, and because of that, this Gideon is a card that many people don't like. Even as standard changed during his time in it, it did nothing to keep Gideon from continuing to see play. He was just so powerful that he was going to see play no matter what decks were good in standard. He moved from Abzan decks to Selesnya tokens to White Weenie to Collected Company and finally to Mardu Vehicles. In addition to standard, this Gideon has been good enough to see play in every other format too. In Modern, he can be found in decks like Junk and Blue-White Control. In Legacy, he sees play in Death and Taxes. And in Vintage, he sees play in Landstill. To put things into context for just how good this Planeswalker has been, especially in comparison to the non-Gideon Planeswalkers out there, I should mention that on my YouTube channel, I do MTG Top 10s that rank cards in a particular category based on their competitive performance. When I did Planeswalkers, Gideon came in second with only Jace the Mind Sculptor, widely held as the best Planeswalker ever, coming in ahead of this Gideon. Gideon made his next appearance on Amonkhet, which until War of the Spark was the only time Gideon was printed as a three-mana Planeswalker. This Gideon does a couple of pretty typical Gideon things. His plus one prevents damage a permanent does until your next turn, and he has a zero ability that makes him into a 4-4 indestructible creature. However, he has a second zero ability, which creates a pretty interesting emblem, one that says that if you control a Gideon Planeswalker, you can't lose, and your opponent can't win. In other words, if you use that ability, the game of magic transforms into one where your opponent will do everything they can to get rid of Gideon. This gets even more potent when it is played alongside other Gideon Planeswalkers, because it doesn't have to be Gideon of the Trials, just any Gideon. Unlike the other Gideons who have seen competitive play, this one didn't actually see play in Standard. Instead, he's been played in Blue-White Control and Jeskai Control decks in Modern, usually alongside Gideon Jura, so that the emblem can be particularly problematic for your opponent. And that brings us to the most recent iteration of Gideon, which could also be his final appearance since he technically died in War of the Spark, though we'll see. Characters in Magic don't always stay dead. All of the Planeswalkers in War of the Spark have static abilities, so of course, Gideon has one of those. And he may have been the easiest Planeswalker static ability for them to design, since in many ways, Gideon all along has had a static ability that makes him a creature on your turn, since it's a zero loyalty ability. In this case, he is a creature and you can use his loyalty abilities, which makes him even better. His plus one gives powerful keyword abilities to your other creatures, and if you can tick his loyalty up enough, he can also exile non-land permanents. I find it hard to imagine that this Gideon won't see play in Standard, since he is such a great card for aggro decks. It is hard to beat a 3-mana 4-4 four four with Indestructible and all of these other abilities. This Gideon is also a huge bomb in War of the Spark Limited, and even in a set filled with bombs, I think Gideon Blackblade is one of the best. It's one of the few cards I gave an A-plus to in my limited set review for War of the Spark. This is because he is nigh unbeatable early and still a major problem for your opponent late thanks to his other abilities. Well, that's all the Gideons we've seen in the game so far. Let us know in the comments if you think Gideon is really dead or if we'll see more of him in the future. If you want to make sure you see future episodes of Planeswalker Project, don't forget to subscribe to the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. For Card Kingdom, I'm Nitsa Hone, and thanks for watching.